Hello and welcome to dealing with materials data course. Today we are going to cover the course or the activity called data description. This is a descriptive statistics. The uh, let us see where, how we are going to cover it. First we would like to know what is the objective of finding descriptive statistics for data. Second, what are the two approaches that we have? There are two approaches here numerical and graphical and then we would like to know certain relationship between known descriptive statistics such as mean, median and mode. The descriptive statistics primary objective is to describe your data to a totally unknown person in a clear, simple and understandable language. It also helps when you go through this descriptive statistics, it gives you an idea how you are going to move in future for further analysis in statistics. What does descriptive analysis do? It explores a certain characteristics of the data. It explores this one by numerical methods or it also explores it by graphical methods. Among the numerical methods, the two methods play a very important role. They are called measures of central tendencies and the measure of dispersion. While graphical methods you must have seen in various newspapers in which they give a plot, they give a histogram or a bar chart, they give a frequency plot, they give a cumulative frequency plot and we do not get to see this very often in the general literature, but box and whisker plot is very common among the scientific lit literature to represent the data. So, let us move on. Uh, first, we would like to discuss different numerical methods to describe the data or to explore the data. Let us assume now that x1, x2, x3, xn, x1, x2, x3, xn are n data points and then we all know that the mean value or the average value of the data is defined by x bar which is defined as the sum of all the values of xi divided by total number of data points that we have. This is called a mean or arithmetic average or simply average of the data points. It, it gives a kind of a central value. If you look at it carefully, what it really does is that if you imagine that you have data values on this straight line distributed all over the place, then generally the mean value x bar fits right in the center of the data. Your data is spreaded all over, it sits in the center of the data and thus it is called a measure of central tendency. If you look at it carefully, it actually draws an equivalence from the physics of uh, what they call mean a, a physics which is called a gravity of matter, center of gravity of the matter. Just as in any matter there is a center of gravity, similarly for any data it is centered around its mean value and thus it has a certain similarity between the physics where we say center of gravity and mean value of the data in statistics. There is another such value and that is called median. Now median is a another uh, tenden central tendency value in which it actually divides the data into two halves. It actually divides the data in two halves. So, if you have x1, x2, x3, xn to be your n data points, 
these are your n data points. We ordered this value remember when you get the x1, x2, xn value they need not be in ascending or a descending order. So, suppose you order them down and call them y1 less than or equal to y2 less than or equal to yn ok. Basically x1, x2, x3 and y1, y2, yn are same but y1, y2, yn are ordered. Once you ordered them if you have odd number of data points that is if your n is odd, if your n is odd you pick exactly the middle value, you pick the n, my, n plus 1 by second value that value is called the median of the data. In other words it will divide the data this side 50 percent of the data will be there and this side also 50 percent of the data will be there. So, this is called a median value. Now, suppose if we have the points are even in number, then you have to take an average value because it does not have any middle value, there are two middle values. So, when there are two middle values, you have to take an average of the value which is sitting at n by second point and the value that sits with n plus 4 points. So, for example, if we have x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5. These are all ordered because this is a real line and therefore these are all ordered then this is your median value ok. But if you have one another point x6 then the median value is average of x3 and x4. This is what it shows. Now the question is that mean or median what to choose? A very common question because both of them in a way provide a middle value of the data. One divides the data in 50-50 while the other divides the data in a such a way that it, is, it becomes a center of the data. We find that when you compare from their value it makes a difference that median is called robust against extreme values in the data while mean is affected by the extreme values of the data. Here we have shown it through a very simple example. Let us take 5 data point in our data which is 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. What is the mean value? Average is going to be 10 and the median value because there are 5 data points the middle value we have to pick up. So, the median is also 10. Now, just replace this 12 by 18.0 extreme value it says. So, extreme value it means that either it is very large or it is very small. In this example we are changing the larger side value to even further large value. Now you see the mean value will become 11.2 while the median is always a middle value and therefore it always remains 10. So, this is what it says that median is robust median is robust against the extreme value while the mean value tends to get affected by the extreme value. So, this is the difference. These kind of difference one needs to use very selectively or very thoughtfully when you apply the central tendency value. For example, if you are considering a case in which you are grading a person among 10 people or among 12 people and you would like to know that 12 people has graded a, a single individual and has given different grades. Now, if someone wants to favor the individual may suddenly give a very high value or if he does not want to favor the person she may give him a very small value. 
In that case, if you take average as your central tendency, the mean value, then that person's perception which is a sort of a biased perception will affect. But if you take in such cases a median value, it will not affect. So, such in such situation where uh, you know a board is examining a person, a student or a candidate for a post or a candidate for a promotion, it is very very common to use median as a measure against mean. There is one more method which is called mode. Mode is very simple. You must have seen the frequency plots. We are going to talk about it at some later time. There is a you can see that there are you come with a bar chart in which the frequency plots are given like this. In that case, it says that mode is the value where the highest frequency is measured. Mode is the value where the highest frequency is measured. It is the most probable value of the data because it is it has the highest probability of occurrence and therefore, it has the most probable value it is called the most probable value of the data. It is possible to have more than one modal value and such inner data and such data is called multimodal. In future in this course now itself when we come to frequency plots we will show you one plot from materials data where we do see the bimodal and this two model distribution actually tells us that how to look into the analysis further how to you know uh, segregate the data in future. There are other statistics involved in it such as there is this percentiles. It means that once again you order the statistics in an ascending order. So, as I said suppose you order them as y1 less than or equal to y2 less than or equal to y3 like that up to less than or equal to yn. Then the first percentile P1, P1 is first percentile where 1 percent values lie below P1. So, for example, if n had been 10, then first percentile would have been probably only one data point should lie below that and therefore, y2 would have been the first percentile. So, likewise you can have a kth percentile where you pick up some value here I call it p k where the number of data here are k percent of n. The values below that value is about k percent of n. There are special names to these uh, percentiles. P25 is called the first quartile Q1 because it divides the 25th percent data. P75 is third quartile and of course, P50 is what we call median. So, if you look at the data if data is on this straight line, 50 percent of the data is divided by this data point, then it is median or we call it P50 or it is called Q2. Here when you say this is Q1, it means that on this side there are 25 percent of the data and here if you call it Q3. It means that this side it is 25 percent, this side is 75 percent of the data. So, these are some of the methods measures of central tendency. There is a relationship between the three measures that we have learned that is mean, 
median and mode. Before we go into it, let us talk about some graphical methods. So, here we are. Oh, and before going to graphical method, sorry, we have to cover method of measure of dispersion. See, in the uh, central tendency, we have covered the measures which actually decides the center point where the data is located, where the data is centered. So, we have mean which is the average value, we have a median which divides the data in two parts 50-50 and we have a mode which gives you the maximum data, maximum frequency of a data. Now we would also like to know how the data is spreaded. For example, why is it important? Because if you know what is the mean value, it is insufficient as we saw that you know what is the maximum and what is the minimum within which area it is spreaded, it is like this or is it like this? You will see that sometimes you have the same mean value, but the data could be spreaded on a larger scale. So, we must know what is called a measure of dispersion. There are three measure of dispersions we are going to discuss here. They are called range, variance or standard deviation and the interquartile range. Let us go to each one of them one after the other. Range as it says, if m is the maximum of your data value and small m is the minimum of the data value, then maximum minus minimum gives you the total range of data. This is one measure of dispersion. So, if you have a data on this straight line, which is x1, x2. Now, please note that this is I am writing it as a ordered data and this is xn. Then this xn minus x1, this is the range of the data. Please note that I have assumed that maximum is xn and minimum is x1, which need not be true all the time. But this is for the simplicity, I have shown it in this way. The another measure which is most commonly used measure is variance. Variance is defined as a mean squared distance, mean squared distance of data from mean. This mean is x bar. So, you can see that it is square distance x i minus x bar to the power square 2. So, it is a square distance and then we have taken a mean value by dividing by n minus 1. Now, this n minus 1 why are we taking n minus 1? You can roughly understand that out of n data points freedom that we had, one parameter of x bar has already been calculated and therefore, we are dividing it by n minus 1. But for time being, we take it as a formula and this is the formula for s square and the standard deviation is the square root of s square which is s. The next measure is interquartile range. In the previous slide, we defined what is the third and the first quartile. The distance between two is called an interquartile range. Roughly speaking, variance gives you dispersion around the mean value and interquartile range gives you a dispersion around median value. This standard deviation as I said is most commonly used measure of dispersion and in this course we would like to emphasize it because the data representation with an error bar 
actually represents the standard deviation that you found in the data. So, under the assumption of normality that is a distribution is the data is distributed very nicely as a bell shaped curve where the mean value lies right in the center. And in that case it says that if you take x bar plus s value and you take x bar minus s value in this area about 67 percent of your data will lie. So, when you measure any value of your experimental uh, result then that value if you give if you find its standard deviation and in plotting on a graph paper suppose you want to show your data points like this you can show it with an error bar in this manner which actually shows that your data lies right in the center and at the most it can make an error of plus or minus 1 sigma and that way 67 percent of your data is covered in this. Therefore, it is very common to show an error bar against every data point and this error bar is generally one standard deviation away. Now we move on to graphical methods. We will cover mainly four kinds of graphical methods which are most commonly used. Histogram or bar chart which is also known as frequency plot, pie chart you must have seen it number of times and cumulative frequency plot and finally box and whisker plot. As I said the histogram, pie chart these are very commonly seen in any general literature such as newspaper or any general scientific journal or any business journal. These are very commonly used uh, graphical methods. Cumulative frequency plot you get to see more frequently in any many of the financial matters. Box and whisker is a plot which is very commonly used among scientific data representation. So, let us move throughout this graphical representation we are going to use this data. This shows a very partial data which covers uh, certain aspects of a data there is a code 1, code 2, some codes are given, there is a temperature given. These are the materials yield strength, ultimate tensile strength, percentage elongation and percentage reduction of area. So, this is a typical materials data and we will cover the graphical methods using this particular set of data. Before going further I would like to summarize what we have done is we are discussing to use descriptive statistics to describe the data to a common person. There are two methods of doing it. So far we have covered the method which is the method of numericals in other words numerically you can calculate certain values to describe the data. The first was central tendency in which we covered mean or arithmetic average, median and mode. Then we also covered how the data is spreaded and that we covered through measure of dispersion by covering the range the standard deviation and the interquartile range. In the next uh, session we will cover 
the graphical methods which will be histogram, uh, frequency plots, pie chart and box and whisker plot. Thank you. Thank you.